Hi, this is uh, AB, um, AB Anand Babu Periyasamy. I just did you my name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Minio, Minayo, they're all fine, they're all right. I used to call Minio, and then what happened was the community overwhelmingly started calling it Minayo, and then I asked them for a reason, and they told that Minio sounds small, Minayo sounds minimalist, and uh, they, they understood our design philosophy from the very beginning. They grew with us, right? They actually helped us grow, and uh, they, that was a very valid reason. And when, once we heard that, we said, okay, we will make that official, and we rebranded. If you see the, the reflection on the logo, right? The word mark, uh, last year we did that to make it official. When you have a large community, they have the power to overwhelm you, right? And this is just community power. Now, they, you may even see me mistakenly like calling it Minio, and you will see that we, our, own, our own team will call it Minio, Minio. They are all fine, they are all right. It, it really, it's a, what matters is the search engine uh, sees that as the same spelling, and uh, they get to us anyway. Right? So, <clears throat> so what is Minio? Minio is an object storage. It's a software. It's a software-only product, and uh, it's uh, meant to do one thing, uh, one thing right. And uh, to be an object storage, uh, it's actually a complete alternative to Amazon S3. It's an Amazon S3 compatible object storage. It's high performance and a few things. We will go into those details. But what it is is it is a complete alternative to public cloud storage. In specific, if you compare Amazon S3 for public cloud, MinIO is for the private cloud. And we wrote it in a way that it has no dependency on anything else, uh, not even Amazon SDKs and tools. Um, so like the server component is literally a 44 megabyte static binary, and all of the functionalities you want is just in that one static binary. Download and run, it runs on a <coughs> variety of environment. There are like people running us on uh, 5G towers on ARM chip. It runs inside like Mellanox Bluefield uh, type uh, smart NICs to uh, to smart store, uh, pretty much like a variety of environment. Power 8, Power 9, uh, x86, from an OSX laptop to a high-end Linux server, right? And uh, it's a highly portable, high-performance object storage. Uh, MC, the Minio client, um, it looks deceivingly simple just as a tool, but it's actually the reason why we wrote that tool is, uh, while well, applications use SDK to talk to the object storage server, the ops guys, they actually write a whole bunch of automation code, and they needed to automate everything, right? And the problem that they had was the traditional Unix-like tools did not work. And you, uh, and you need to be able to manage massive amounts of data and do all the automation around it. And uh, MC gives you a complete Unix core utils, like, like LSCP, RSync, a whole bunch of these tools, uh, but more modern, more powerful. It even works for a regular file system. Right? Uh, and then comes the SDK. Why did we even write our own SDK when Amazon SDKs are open source? When we looked at the SDK early on, the APIs were auto-generated, they were not idiomatic, it was blotted with a whole bunch of other services that Amazon has launched over the years, and we needed something clean, simple, and idiomatic when, when a developer touches the SDK. End of the day, what we care is when we, you put a lot of effort on the server, and if your application is talking to your server and the, and the APIs are poorly designed, that's the experience they will remember. Right? And we needed to actually put a lot of effort on the SDK. It's a lot of work. While it's not given that much credit, it was an important thing to us. Even design-wise, right? Like apart from being idiomatic, clean, lightweight, that experience, like Amazon SDKs would send objects in 5 MB chunks. 5 MB is really small, but they needed to do it because the applications will be sending this data over of 2G to like Wi-Fi, they will flip flip over, and they may lose data on an unreliable network. So they needed to do small amount of data. But we were actually seeing our adoption growing on high end, like deep learning environment, mission critical environment, where they were running us on 100 gigabit ethernet. You don't want to be chatty 5 MB chunks. It would actually optimize itself automatically to 128 MB chunks. So there are many reasons why we need the private cloud, while it looks like public cloud, is actually quite a different beast. And we needed to actually fo put our focus on private cloud and give them that class of object storage with no dependency on anybody else, and that's what it is. And why did 
Why did we even get into this object Sorry, service? You, you mentioned private cloud, but actually also edge applications. I mean, not just private cloud. Yeah, yeah. It's, so the, the concept is getting uh, yes. a little bit different lately. I, in, uh, so uh, we are now, uh, like ARM, when someone started doing, the community sent us like a, like a eight node, Raspberry, actually Pine64 cluster, right? They, they were just excited about what we were doing and they just donated, a, a, this was like in the first or second year, uh, uh, so, they will, so that we will maintain ARM support. I was like, okay, that's hackers and hobbyists. Like, why will anyone run on a, on a Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, but uh, this is Pine64, Raspberry Pi is 32-bit ARM. It, we, we, we chose to be there everywhere. It, whether or not we'll make money, it doesn't matter. We need to be there everywhere. That was the goal, right? And we supported it. And uh, But eventually we see that actually turning out to 5G towers, edge applications, it actually happened at a later, but I couldn't anticipate when we started. Then later on, we even added more support. We'll go into those details later, that at the edge, they don't want that to be a full-blown storage system because you could entirely lose the truck or whatever edge tower, right? And you should not lose any data. They want the edge to be a edge caching, CDN-like storage, but it's a full-blown object storage. Minerva has support for even that. Okay. So, yes. So, why did we do this? Now it looks so obvious, particularly last year, huge transition happened in the industry. That is, private cloud finally started emerging, right? But when we started, the first question, like, typical investors or other technologists would ask, are you going to run this inside AWS? I'm like, sure, it can run, but it's of no use, right? So why would you run this inside AWS on EBS when you already have Amazon S3? It is designed to actually solve the problem when you're outside Amazon S3. They would laugh at us at that time because they thought that AWS will be the world's data center. There will be one public cloud vendor and nobody else, right? It, the industry believed that was true five years before, but our bet was that it, it, it is possible. Amazon cannot be taken lightly. They can do a lot of things right, and they are doing it, right? And, but for us, we can do one thing better than Amazon. And our goal was, let S3 win AWS, but we will win the rest of the world. Bulk of the data that world will generate, it's hard for me to imagine, it will all be sitting on Amazon S3. So my point was, bulk of the data world will generate will actually be outside Amazon S3. And that's the market we need to win. And thanks for Amazon to opening up the market, right? The, the market outside of us was all SAN and NAS, the enterprise market, they didn't get it. So our focus was, we knew that the world will produce incredible amount of data. We knew that 10 years from now, this problem will actually only compound and grow bigger and bigger. If you built a powerful brand, it's here to stay. And everything that you see in the market today, like I many back in five years, they were all enterprise SAN, NAS type storage systems. They had no understanding of what was about to come, and that was our opportunity. Right? That's why we got into that market. And our thing is, it, we don't want to be just yet another object storage. This is something we heard commonly when we, in the, the first uh, couple of years, we thought it was a solved problem. Why yet another object storage? And if it was just yet another object storage that I can do this better, we had, we had really no good reason to do. Just being marginally better, it, it's actually a brutal market to be in a market where there are many players, uh, and one is like slightly, over, uh, slightly better over the others. That was not the idea at all. I actually saw that the opportunity was that everybody else out there essentially came up with a hardware appliance, or they took a traditional file system design, a really textbook theory, and then added a S3 API on top, they did not understand this market fundamentally. Right? What I saw was this is actually a complex problem. It looks like complex, but the fundamental thing was that it was not complex at all. I saw that this was an easy problem. When you find an easy solution to a complex problem, that's when you can build a real business. For me, that we saw that this was an opportunity for us that everybody thinks this is hard, but it's actually not hard. It, if you, if you have tried MinIO before, you will see that MinIO fundamentally is a web server. It's really a web server with all the storage functions like erasure code, bitrot, encryption, whatever. They are simply web handlers. It runs as the heart of MinIO is a web server. If that's the case, it's really, and, and it's also stateless web server. That's why a distributed MinIO you can crash, you don't lose any data, and it's, it's, it's simple. For me, now I know that the 
because it is so simple, I can grow fast, I can take over the market, and for me, the important thing is that this is a market that will consolidate, right? This is a winner take all. We knew that if, we, if you are marginally better, you still go home with nothing. And we saw that everyone thinks that it is a hard problem. We saw it was a simple problem. And we are open source, right? They can just copy our code, see everything, but they can't, why are they not copying our code? You will see by now, many of these storage vendors are actually using our product inside their product. But the problem they fundamentally have is the mindset issue. That was, for me, an advantage. Every, they, if you talk to a, a file system guy, they always think that everything is a file system problem. They, the, somehow the storage engineers, the, the developers behind these storage systems, they like to do complex things. They take great pride in building kernel systems. They will, for them, they look down upon user space programs. User space engineers, they look down upon application developers. They don't understand that the application developers destroyed the traditional enterprise IT. A bookseller, Amazon, turned out to be a better infrastructure player because they understood the problems better. Google or Facebook, they, like from WhatsApp to name it, the application developers understood the problems at scale. Why? Because they had a different mindset. That was the advantage we had, right? And we knew that when, when we mature, we will look nothing like any other object storage vendors. And if we stick to our focus, when we start, last three, five years, right? Community will ask, why not Swift API? Why, why not like uh, NFS? Can you add NFS? Customers ask all the time. I will tell them, I can add NFS. I can add file systems, uh, file system API. We actually know how to build a file system because we built Gluster. But I'm, the truth is, if I add a file system API to Minayo, I will give you a mediocre object storage and a terrible file system. Do you want that? Right, the, whole, the goal of MinIO is I will give you one thing really, really well. The strength for us is it's not like we are smarter engineers than others. Everybody has access to the same talent pool. The strength we have is focus. If you, if you focus on just one thing, even Swift API, I ask the community, pick one, Swift API or S3 API. And it, it's very easy to answer, right? They said S3 API, then you, you have the answer, right? That focus, that relentless focus of the minimalism, that minimalism for us is not less or more. It's actually a perfect quantity of something. If you remove something, if it becomes incomplete, put it back. If you add something, if it is excess, you remove it. We always tell even the community when they submit improvements, if you remove something, your patches will get through faster than you added a new feature. When yes. you say that it's a web server, is it like based on Apache? Like what kind of web server is it? Okay, so that's a good question, right? It's the, so the, first, why is it a web server? Look at the S3 API, they are simply REST APIs, right? And if you hired an average developer today uh, to ask, like, write a web application, ask this per, a, average web developer, and in, even an intern, you know PHP or Node.js, and ask this, ask this girl, can you write me a simple Dropbox-like interface, right? They know how to solve this problem. It's simply they will have a file uploader package, and they know how to do this. What they will do is take a standard web server and then write these web handlers, and the application will go live next day, right? That's pretty much what happened at Amazon. They understood that this is not nothing to do with fiber channel or Ethernet or any of these. This is a web storage is a web service problem. Now, what web server we are using? Web server itself has become a commodity. Every programming language has a package, HTTPD package. You just simply import it. Okay, you so, so yeah, in MinIO's case, it's actually not Apache. It's actually Go language. It's written in GoLang. It's simply a GoLang HTTPD server. Okay. So uh, the, that essentially gave us the the advantage that <laughs> market thinks that this is a very different problem. And we actually think that it's a simple problem. And if an average Node.js Node developer actually knows how to build application storage infrastructure, and they find that this is easier. They find that this is easier than Redis or a database. Why should object storage be part of kernel or some managed by some IT or somebody else? Most of our deployments are just managed by users themselves. Until it matures, they start asking IT, hey, I want 10 petabytes data and I, I, storage. The, and IT asks why, and that's when they realize that they are actually running MinIO, right? But we, it, that simplicity and understanding of the problem with a very different view, uh, that, that was the advantage we had. Are you 
gaining money from the service contracts? Or, I mean, how, how do you monetize this environment if yes. it's open source? That's actually the one, of, uh, one of the most common questions, right? We, we, there are slides that Jonathan will address, address on them, but, uh, what, uh, but we, uh, Jonathan will go into details of how we actually make money. But fundamentally, right, the, the reasons, uh, op to address on the open source part, if you see that uh, there are many open source startups, they will say they are open source, but then when you actually try it, hey, that feature is proprietary, right? To me, uh, if I am even proprietary, it's better for me to, like I'm better than open core because I never misled, right? The brand is the most important thing that customers, they even expect, they, when they talk to a proprietary software vendor, they know exactly what they are getting. If I told you I'm open source and I'm partially open source, I'm kind of misleading, right? MinIO's case is 100% <coughs> open source. and why that doesn't hurt the business? We actually not about hurting the business. We see that it helps our business. But what we see is customers pay you because you solve a business problem, and they believe in your brand that you are the best brand that they can tr put their trust on. And it has nothing to do with the access to the source code. Actually, the idea of holding customers hostage with the license key, I think those days are over. Right? Today is about they can they trust that you are the brand that they want to put their business trust upon because data is the heart of all modern enterprise and for them it's hugely risky to to take some proprietary vendor even the large enterprise uh, like st storage vendors i don't want to name anyone but you will see even they have killed and iterated their products multiple times startup or not customers see that open source is the best trust that they can have. And also, the, what is the best escrow? GitHub, right? The, the world has changed, and open source has turned out to be a huge advantage for us. And if we believe in it like completely, it should be completely open source, and we are.